3A, how are you? We hope you're all well and that you're keeping safe and healthy. Um, we're really pleased that we can speak to you today. Uh, school is very different without you, but we're managing to keep busy. Both Mrs Ellis and I are working really, really hard. We've really enjoyed uh, seeing all your fantastic emails with pictures of your work and everything else that you've been doing. Most of you have really enjoyed learning about the ancient Egyptians and have produced some beautiful work. Some of you have a few questions, and so we're going to answer them now. I'm going to hand you over to my job share. Now, let me think who that could be. Is it... No, 3A, it's me, of course, Mrs Ellis, and I'm going to talk to you today about something that a few of you have asked about, which is how to use commas in your punctuation and in your writing. Okay then, 3A, so you wanted to know a little bit about how to use commas in your writing. So a comma is a punctuation mark. It tells us to take a brief pause when we are reading, not as long a pause as a full stop gives us. It's the most common punctuation mark, but it does need to be used carefully. So a comma sits on the line. So here's our handwriting lines that you're used to seeing. And if we just bring this uh, phrase up and we pop it onto the line, you can see that the comma would sit in the same sort of position as a full stop. That's where it would go. Now, one of the ways that we use commas is when we are writing a list in a sentence. So in this sentence, we've got a comma, it's just here, and the sentence says, we will need hammers, nails, and a saw. So in the list of items, the comma is going to separate the hammers from the nails, and it just tells us to take a little pause as we are reading or speaking. So here's another example. She stopped, stared, and ran. So these, this is a list of things that somebody is doing. So she's stopping, she's staring, and then on she goes. This list contains a phrase between each of the commas. So we have Sam frightened the cat, teased the dog, and annoyed the neighbours. You may have noticed that when you are separating the items in a list, at the end, between the last two items in the list, we put the word and, and there you don't need to use a comma as well. So here we have a sentence where we've got a list and at the moment there's a missing comma. So let's have a look. He has sandwiches, an apple, two biscuits, and an orange juice carton. So, sounds like he's got his packed lunch with him. Let's see, he has sandwiches. So, that's the first item in our list. So we're going to pop a comma. I'm just using the mouse, so it's going to be a little bit wobbly. Now, an apple, that's one item. So we're going to pop another comma there. Two biscuits. Now, I might think I need to put another comma here, but no, I've got the word and, which means I'm coming up to the last item, so I don't need to use a comma as well. So, he has sandwiches, an apple, two biscuits, and an orange juice carton. This is the easiest way of using commas and the way that you're going to practice later on. Now, another way that commas can be used, and I'm just going to show you some of these quickly, just so you can start to notice them when you're reading. So commas are used to break up longer sentences into smaller parts to make more sense. So let's have a look at this sentence. When Paul saw the food, his tummy started to rumble. So the comma here is helping us to read this sentence, just telling us to take a, a slight pause. Let's have a look at another one. When he saw the pirate ship on the horizon, the captain gave the alarm. Now you can tell by the way that I read that sentence that we need to put a comma just here to show that we're going to take a brief pause. When he saw the pirate ship on the horizon, the captain gave the alarm. 
Sometimes commas are used to separate any extra information that's added into a sentence. The words enclosed by the commas could be left out without changing the general meaning of the sentence. So, this unfortunate chap, Paul Mann, broke his leg in the match on Saturday. Now, if we wanted to give a little bit more information about Paul Mann, we might say, Paul Mann, our star player, broke his leg in the match on Saturday. Now, you can see all of the black writing is exactly the same. And we've just added in an extra little bit of information. And that extra little bit of information has got a comma before and a comma straight afterwards. So you might notice in your reading that you start to see commas being used in this way. Here's another one. The man slid silently into the room. Okay, so we've still got the same words here, but if we wanted to add an extra little bit of information, the man who was wearing a tall blue hat slid silently into the room. Let's move on. Other uses. Well, in year three, we usually only look at numbers up to four digits, but we can read five-digit numbers probably much more than that now. Sometimes we use commas to break up groups of numbers into thousands. So I expect lots of you can read this number, but if you're not sure, 1,999,999. That's a really big number. And the commas helped me to know how to say that number. So if we look at some five-digit numbers over here, at the moment I might not be sure how to read it, but as you know from Mr Sewell's videos, you count in three places, you put a comma, and now it's much easier to read. 35,712. If you want to, you can pause this for a moment and have a go at the other two before I show you. But again, I count in 1, 2, 3, 41,904. In three places, 62,001. Another time you might see commas used is when writing the date. So you can see that in February the 14th, 1990, a comma has just been used to separate those parts of the date. And you may start to notice that when you see speech in your reading books, commas are sometimes used. So inside speech marks, we are leaving tomorrow, said Fred. It's almost 10 minutes to nine, she said. So if when we close the speech marks, it's not the end of a sentence, we may use a comma. Now, what you can practice today, if you would like to, is how to add commas into sentences with lists. So, I'm going to read through the sentences, and then if you want to, you can pause it for a moment. You could write down the sentences, you could put the commas in yourself, and then you can check with me. So, I like to collect potions, wands, and magic books. Frogs snakes and spiders are my favourite animals. My hat, robe and shoes belong in the closet. Would you rather be able to fly, see through walls or make yourself invisible? Now that's one of those where you've got a phrase in between each comma. The way to the secret cave is through the woods, over the pond and under the bridge. Right, so you may have had a go at that 3A, but uh, now let's have a look and see how you did. I like to collect potions, comma, wands, and magic books. The and is telling us that we don't need another comma after wands. Frogs, one item in our list. Snakes and spiders are my favourite animals. Can't see a full stop at the end of that sentence. I'm just going to put one in because I think that I may have forgotten earlier. My hat, robe, two different items in our list, and shoes belong in the closet. So this next one was a little bit more difficult. Would you rather be able to fly, comma, see through walls? Now, would it go here? 
Now it makes sense for the comma to go here, see through walls, or make yourself invisible. Notice this is a question, so we've got a question mark. The way to the secret cave is through the woods, over the pond, and under the bridge. Well, we're going to go through the woods first, so that's going to need a comma there. Over the pond, do I need one here? No, there's an and, so I don't need another comma. And under the bridge. So what we'd like you to try and do now is when you are writing, we'd like you to try to remember to use commas when you are writing sentences that includes lists. That would be very, very useful for when you go into year four, if you can already do that. And I'd like you to start noticing the position of other commas in your general reading. We don't want you to start using commas everywhere, just in the places they are supposed to be. So just to recap, Commas can show a brief pause within a sentence. They can separate items in a list, separate additional information, break up longer sentences into smaller parts, break up numbers into thousands, and inside speech marks. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing Mrs Terry and I today. We really look forward to seeing you again. Uh, if that's in year four, we'll be very, very happy to speak to you and find out how you've been getting on. And we very much look forward to seeing you do your class assemblies. Bye-bye for now.